On today's episode, we're going to take a look at this, the Ender 2 Pro. This thing has features higher price Creality printers have, and it's only $169. Now, it's a little smaller build area, but I swear this is a better starter printer than the Ender 3. You could almost call it the Ender 2 V2. I'll explain it all on today's Film It Friday. Film It Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. The Ender 2 Pro comes mostly assembled. You just assemble the top half to the bottom half with a few screws and then a few connections and you're ready to go. I really like that they mark the bags for the screws so I know I was getting the proper screw. The first two screws you got to install is through the bracket that supports the upper half. So those two screws go in and then there's two at the bottom. So it's really strong. The side of the machine has a built-in spool holder mount. You just slide the spool holder in, one screw holds it, and you can actually pivot this thing out of the way. The LCD is fully enclosed in a single connector, so no confusion hooking that up, and then it just pops into place on the side of the machine. They include an injected molded handle, which you mount to the top, and this thing is so light, it's really easy to carry around. The next step is just to make all the electrical connections to either the motors or the switches, and all the wires have labels on them so you can tell where they're supposed to go. Just follow the instructions, get them to the right place, and you should have no problem getting this properly connected. Make sure you got the voltage set for your country, 115 in the US, plug it in, and we're ready to try it out. Now let's take a look at some of the features. It's got a standard LCD menu, just like an Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro. It's got a magnetic flexible bed like the Ender 3 Pro. It's got manual adjustment with springs to adjust the bed. It's got adjusters for the X and the Y belts so you can keep them guys tight. It also has a little storage drawer for the tools which is really nice. The hot end is a standard Creality hot end with the PTFE tubing going all the way down to the nozzle. It also has a ground wire going to the top of it. I'll explain that in a minute. It's got a single cooling fan for filament and then the cooling fan for the hot end. To see the electronics, you need to remove two of the feet, and then there's eight screws to remove the cover. Electronics cooling fan is on a connector, which is nice, but this is probably the loudest fan on the whole machine. The board is a version 4.2.3, so that's a different board than the Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro. The board has silent drivers, but you also notice there's a ground wire in the upper left-hand corner. That's because the electronics are in a plastic box instead of a grounded metal box like you see on Ender 3 and one of those ground wires go out to the hot end. Here's where it gets interesting. It's got an RET6 micro, which is a 512K memory. That's a bigger chip than what was on that $429 Ender 3S1 that I showed a couple weeks ago. Here's another nice surprise. It's got a full featured firmware out of the box. It's got a configuration menu where you can turn power loss recovery on and off. It's even got advanced settings where you can control velocity, acceleration, jerk, and even your E-steps right from the LCD. This is awesome. The only thing I saw missing was in the motion menu where you might want to position the nozzle above the adjusters when you're leveling the bed. So I made my own from my e-leveler tool that goes around to each corner and thankfully the machine recognizes the M0 pause command which the Ender 3 Ender 3 Pro don't always do. So this is a really nice firmware. I also verified at this firmware level that the thermal runaway protection is enabled. So they even did that right. Level the bed, I did have to lower the Z-stop almost all the way down to the bottom to give enough travel and then I ran my G-code to position above the adjusters. This automatically lifts the 5.8 millimeters that my tool needs and then I just went around to each corner and adjusted it until the light just came on and once I got all four corners set then I could run the square test which I made one for this bed size and it came out perfect. I'll put a link to all this in the description below. It came with some sample filament so the first thing I printed was a chep cube and it actually came out really nice. I then used some of my old Filament Friday Red Filament PLA and it printed really good, but I could see some gaps at the top. I did test one of their sample G-code files, this bunny. It clearly is not the best slicing and that's their slicer. And those gaps at the top tell me that the E-steps are off. I did try out the power loss recovery, but I forgot to clean the nozzle. And that's why you see that little string right where the power loss recovery happened. I did print this miniature. It's a Dragon Knight from Thingiverse user Dutch Mogul. 
I printed it at 0 0.012 layer height with a 0.4 nozzle, and I printed at 50 millimeters per second, and it came out really good. I'm surprised how good it is at that speed and that big of a nozzle. They do offer a couple handle options in their sample prints. I printed this one just to see if maybe it's a little more balanced over the center of the printer, and it turned out it's about the same. After I printed the handle, I did print some practical prints. This is one that fits on the bed. It's for a fishing project for my son. There's a couple more that I made that fit nicely together. And I've noticed the flow is a little bit off, so I'm gonna have to adjust the E-steps on this because it's just slightly off, but I can do that right through the LCD menu, which is really nice. Now, I like the compact size, so I can take this with me. All I need is a cord because the power supply is built in. I can tuck away the filament on the side because it moves. And if I want, I can even pop off the LCD pack that away and put this in a case or a nice box. Another mini that I have is the Prusa Mini and this is a really nice printer but it did come with a separate spool holder. So I did print a spool holder that goes on the front and then it comes with a separate brick which is kind of clumsy to carry around so I like that there's a power supply built in. Now this can print higher temperatures but then it's more than twice the price of this guy. So I like this. It does have a little bit bigger build area. If I take this off and compare it to this guy, you can see the build area is bigger. Now some would say a better comparison is the Ender 2 Pro to the Ender 3 Pro. And what's the difference? Well first off, this is about 30 to $40 more, so already financially you're going to spend more money. This is also a kit you have to put together, it'll take you about an hour to put together. This one went together in about 15-20 minutes max, I did it really in about 10 minutes. But you do get a bigger build area with this much bigger build area so that's the advantage but what you don't get is the silent drivers on the control board so it's a noisier printer and you don't get as smooth of prints as you do on this in fact there's a lot of things this doesn't have that this has it's got adjusters for the X and Y belt it's got a storage drawer it's got the silent drivers it's even got an enclosed LCD this one is exposed so this is actually closer to an Ender 3 V2 in features than this. And if you have to replace the board, there's another $40 you gotta put in to get that silent driver. You're now about $80 more than this. So to me, this is a far better deal for someone starting out to see if you even like 3D printing. And then if it's a second printer for you, do you really need the bigger size? Because a lot of times I print in this area. This is going to fit 80 to 85 percent of what I print. So do I need that bigger print? So I like the Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro, but to me this is the next step. The Creality did a great job with this. Great features and for $169 I don't think you can go wrong. This is a fantastic printer. Great print quality for $169. If you like what I'm doing here, you can check out some of the other videos that are popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or just use the affiliate links in the description below. And if nothing else, click on that CHEP logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.